And when I talk about voice, I don't mean this. Let me just find it. You know, like, I don't mean voice that is uh, uh, rude or voice that uh, is inappropriate, you know. I do mean helping kids find ways of getting stronger. You know, we teach, that's what my book, Attention Please, is. How do you help kids find their public voices? How do you actually teach them to be strong public speakers? Because actually, this is important. And as we, you know, do this and this and, you know, technological stuff, we've, I think we're going to kind of wonder whether or not being able to speak face-to-face -face is that important. And I actually think it is. So I think, you know, helping kids be stronger is extremely important. And to know how to make their voices strong. Um, but I also think um, as they get stronger, they know, need to know how to be thoughtful as well. How to think on their feet how to actually merge thought and public voice together so that they are able to kind of um, be uh, appropriate. You know, I, I think that's extremely important. And thirdly, once they get, learn how to be appropriate and once they learn how to kind of be confident and strong, how do they become critical? How do they learn how to say, yeah, I thought I understood that, but I see it differently because of this, 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 and this, right? So how do you actually help kids become critical speakers? Criti how do you help them find their critical voice? Appropriately, but uh, um, also with strength. And you can decide whether or not this voice is appropriate or strong or bad. A little girl was talking to her teacher about whales. The teacher said, it was physically impossible for a whale to swallow a human being because even though it was a very large mammal, its throat was very small. The little girl stated that Jonah was swallowed by a whale. Irritated, the teacher reiterated that a whale could not swallow a human being. It was physically impossible. The little girl said, well, when I get to heaven, I'll ask Jonah. <laughs> the teacher asked, well, what if Jonah went to hell? And the little girl replied, then you ask him. I love that. I thought she was pretty appropriate and strong and critical. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, you know, I, I, I can do, you know, I love the A's and the E's and all the things that we do, you know, to kind of structure our speeches. And I loved uh, Lisa's effectiveness and efficiency, right? And I have sort of what I call my six E's of effective teaching, which are... Uh, I just attended Lisa Delpit's lecture in, at OISE in Toronto where she talked about the first D that I care a lot about, which is having high expectations for all kids. Just because we work in classrooms where things are difficult doesn't mean that we don't set the bar high for every single student. <laughs> and I think that that's an extremely important um, thing to know about. And there's all, if you want to look up Lisa Delpit and look at her research, uh, around this p particular piece, it's very insightful about how teacher expectation is actually critical to the achievement of students in schools. And kind of scary stuff that she told me that I didn't know actually when I wrote my book on teaching fairly in an unfair world, her new research around that. But I think that that's extremely important. And I just uh, had this amazing experience a number of years ago working with the Canadian Education Association where I worked with 27 at-risk students from three different Canadian cities. And uh, we, we, it's a long, long story. It takes a long time to talk about. But uh, we had an opportunity to speak to uh, uh, educators and directors of education and superintendents and trustees and teacher union representatives from across Canada at a conference called Getting It Right for Adolescent Learners in Vancouver in 2006. And I had the opportunity of working with these students who were drawn from three high schools in Vancouver, Toronto, and Halifax, and who were chosen not because they could actually go on a field trip, but because they had something to say to these educators about how they need, we needed to change schools for them. And, uh, you know, they said all sorts of things, these students. They said, um, 
And, and, you know, once again, here it is again. Good teachers make all the difference in the world. You know, good teachers are the reason that I'm in school. You should meet my teachers, they said. You should meet who, what they do and what they say and what they've done for me. You know, I say to my student teachers, you think you don't make a, a difference every minute of the day? Do you think that what you say to students regularly, daily, doesn't actually shape their minds about who they are? and what they think about themselves. Because actually what Eisner says is right. Children are born with brains, and it's up to teachers and schools, the mediating factor, to develop those brains into minds. And mind-altering devices such as the things that we do in classrooms that help kids feel um, connected to school, connected to themselves, connected to others, is extremely important. Um, and these kids said that, you know, good teachers make all the difference in the world. They also said very clearly, though, and, you know, Delpit says this too, teach us. You know, just because we're difficult, just because we struggle with teaching, doesn't mean that you have to kind of, you have to kind of get, I was in Winnipeg actually working and sitting on a panel with all these uh, different, different group of students who said you need to get beyond our groaning, you know. I thought that was a great, you know, because we'll groan, you know, get over it and move on, you know. So, I, you know, they said, teach us. And there's this great kid named Kevin from Vancouver who said, you know, I'm, I'm LD. And every afternoon I go to the LD center after school. And I go past the gifted program in my high school. And I see these kids, you know, they've had a great day. They've either had a guest speaker. They've been out on a field trip. You know, they've done active kind of work. And he's saying this to the director of education, Chris Kelly, who's a great guy, you know, sitting there in his suit at a rehearsal in Vancouver. And he says, you know, he said, uh, I don't get it. Are you guys stupid? He says, you know, why wouldn't you give that opportunity to me? Why wouldn't you give me that kind of experience? This is the first field trip I've ever gone on. He says, I need you to, to, to act like, he says, emergency room people. We need you to look after our special needs. And it's funny, you know, I, uh, I had this cleaned for this event, this <laughs> yellow jacket, because I thought it was going to be hot, you know, so I thought I'll get out my summer clothes. And uh, I, uh, I take off the dry cleaning thing this morning, and it says, special attention. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? That's what we need to do for these kids. They need that kind of special attention. And um, so they, they said that. They said teachers are important. They said teach us, etc. But what really came out of the whole experience for me was, you know, good teachers, if we're going to talk about who you are sitting in this room, and I was speaking at the uh, inner city principals conference a couple of uh, months ago, and they all, all these principals nodded their heads because they all know who the good teachers are on their staff. Good teachers, these kids basically said to us, are teachers who have a sense of kid who know who we are, know where we're from, know what we're up against, and are going to kind of work it for us, right? You know, differentiated instruction, DI as they call it. I love it. You know, sometimes I sit in meetings, I have no idea what people are talking about. I just pretend, DI, boo, 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 snoo, boo, boo. I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, it's getting worse. But, you know, really that's what it is, is figuring out who the kids are in front of you and actually working it so that it kind of uh, works for them. And um, secondly, the other thing that good teachers do is give students a sense of self, you know, so that they, they walk out of their cla your classroom transformed by the experience of being accepted, acknowledged, understood, taught, etc. And when the, the night, the, the rehearsal uh, in Vancouver, we had two days to put together an hour long performance. Never mind, it worked fine. But just before we were about to go on, two hours before, the, the most at-risk kid in the, in the company from Dartmouth, who's coming in with the opening note, of course, singing, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, we are from, we are from. You know, she's going to do that. She comes up to me and she says, for some reason, I'm really sick. Oh my God, my voice, listen. So I'm looking at her, she's really sick. I, I just, you know, it's just, I'm wobbly. 
my knees, you know, I'm looking at her, but of course my knees are wobbly right now, so I know what she feels like. So uh, I said, really? And she said, yes. And, and then her friend Melissa, who she's become very close with from Toronto, says, me too, I'm so sick. Oh my, I think it's a, I think it's a flu. I think, you know, oh my God. Well, it's four o'clock, you know, we're, supposed, we're going on at seven. So the teachers, who I love, they run over to the Delta Suites and they grab duvets and they get the, you know, the, um, the uh, chef to chop up ginger and, you know, brew green tea and pookie pookie, you know. And <laughs> have you ever been to the Delta Suites in Vancouver? If you ever go, it's really an interesting hotel because these kids, many of whom had never stayed in a hotel, thought there was always a registration desk because they'd seen it at, uh, in movies. And no, there's just very thin people who stand around sort of little round tables. And they, uh, so they were hugely disappointed. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, this is the high expectations piece, you know. I, I, I'm looking at these kids and the teachers. I love them. And I finally just said, you know, cancel the tea, cancel the ginger, cancel the, the duvets. We have a job to do and we have to do it. And, of course, she did. And it wasn't, you know, she wasn't sick. She was scared. And my student teacher said, well, when do you know when to chop up the ginger? You know, you figure it out. <laughs> right? You know? You know, how do you then, you know, become open to the location of your students, you know? And that's the, uh, the next piece. The, the next E for me is how do you establish an inclusive, respectful uh, 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 classroom environment? You know, how do you work it so that everyone is aware of who is in the room and is accepting of each person's strengths and weaknesses? <laughs>